Hello there. Today we're going to be looking at all of the rares, the locations and drops inside of Dustwood. There are six rares in this zone in total and I'm going to also be showing you how to get to a few of them as some of them are quite well hidden. I'll also be showing you a fun little easter egg I found whilst looking at some of the rares. And I just want to also give a big thanks to everyone that's subscribed to the channel so far and shown their support. I didn't even think I would be at 100 subscribers by this point so to have 2000 is um, yeah, it's absolutely mind boggling. Also pending some feedback from a few individuals, I will now be including a map of all the rares at the end of each video. So without further ado, let's crack on with it. Lupos So up first we have Lupos, a level 23 elite wolf that hangs around on the Darkened Bank. The Darkened Bank is just north of Ravenhill Cemetery and Lupos himself does not really roam about that much which means that if he's in the area or rather you're in the area you've got a pretty good chance of catching him if he's spawned. You can make Lupos out because he is a lot whiter than all the other wolves in the area and I think he's a little bit larger as well. The actual fight itself is not that difficult with him and if you kill him he will have a 15% chance to drop the Nightbane Staff and an 85% chance to drop the Hide of Lupos. The Hide of Lupos is definitely the thing you want here as the 2 Stam 3 Agility is absolutely great and the highest drop chance is awesome on it. The Nightbane Staff, eh, I'm not really too sure why anyone would need that but it's really cool that Blizzard included it as unique loot. I'd also like to mention that nearby Lupos there are also two chests out in the wilderness. If you kill him and you just see here on the video and you go right behind, there's a a solid chest hidden in between two trees that will normally have a green in it or maybe two green sometimes or a green in a recipe. There's also one more chest uh, and I'll just show you here it's a bit further away and it'd be not immediately obvious to see it but if you head towards Ravenhill Cemetery along this tree line you'll find that the chest is just off on the right before you actually hit the cemetery. Again if they're not here um, unfortunately somebody else has taken them the area is quite popular but if they are here, this makes Lupos an absolutely great kill to get, as you're going to get multiple greens. Naraxis Up next we have Naraxis, a level 27 elite spider that is just south of Darkshire. If you find the mana that Blind Mary is in, this is the easiest way to find the Raxis. Blind Mary also has a solid chest next to her sometimes by the way. If you find the mana that Blind Mary is in and head to the left, you'll see a little rising road that heads up into the hills. If you keep following this road, it will take you straight round a bend and through to the cave where Naraxis is, as long with a couple of other ads. The fight with Naraxis itself is pretty simple. As a spider, you would expect it to have some sort of poison, but it actually doesn't. The only ability that Naraxis has, and unfortunately I couldn't show on here because I'm too high level, I kind of just resist everything, but uh, essentially it has a 30 second immobilize. Now this means that if you do want to run away, I wouldn't advise it because you're going to be stuck there for 30 seconds. So your best bet is to clear the area of as many spiders as possible and then just try and fight her and kill her as quickly as possible. She doesn't have a crazy amount of health so it should be pretty easy but always take a friend if you're not sure. As for loot, Naraxis has some really awesome loot actually. A 50% chance to drop Naraxis's fang which is an awesome dagger and as you'll have seen in other videos I have a real thing for chance on hit weapons and this has a poison so that's double good. And a 50% chance to drop the husk of Naraxis which again is an awesome male chest piece. Fun little side fact, Naraxis is actually the first rare I ever killed in World of Warcraft. I don't know how it took me all the way to about 27 to actually find a rare to kill but it kind of just goes to show just how popular servers were back then. And yeah, it's got very fond memories of this creature. Lord Malathrom So up next we have Lord Malathrom, a level 31 elite that hangs around in the eastern portion of the Dorningwood Catacombs. I'm just showing you here how to quickly get to him as a lot of people sometimes get confused about the layouts of these underground places. Basically when you're in the catacombs you hang a left and then you just keep following the rooms around until you end up in a big crypt area. He's in the second crypt on the right. The actual fight with Lord Malathrom is horrendous. 
you're almost definitely going to need more than one person to do this. He's just really, really painful to fight, as you'll see here. He also spawns two additional adds. So not only may you also be fighting the adds in the room, because the room does get quite cluttered and the respawn times are really low on them, that will also hit for a crap ton of damage. You can see here I barely survived. I think my defense skill does need to be improved a little bit, but it just goes to show how easy it is to kill someone way higher than you. As for loot, this guy is awesome. His unique loot is a spiked collar, a 50% chance to drop it. And the spiked collar is really unique in the sense that it is actually a bind on pickup and it's a use once item. And I'll just show you now it in use. It will summon an awesome little fell hunter that goes off and attacks things for you. It's more of a presentational gimmick more than anything. The fell hunter, even at level 60, does not really hit for that much. 9 damage even around kind of level 30, which is where you're probably going to be killing this guy, is still not that significant. The problem I also found is this fell hunter has literally a will of its own, there's no way to control it like a regular demon, so it will just run around and kill people until it dies. Commander Felstrom. Up next we have Commander Felstrom, a level 32 elite undead, in the western portion of the Dawningwood Catacombs. Very easy to find this guy, all you have to do is go through the western mausoleum entrance and hang a right, and he is at the end. This guy is much easier to kill than Lord Malathrom for several reasons, the first one being that there aren't as many ads around him, uh, so that's a huge bonus. The second is he doesn't spawn additional ads as well, so that's a huge bonus. And the third is he has less health and generally does less damage as well. So I'm not really sure why this is the case. He is one level higher, but there we go. His actual loot is pretty good as well. A 50% chance to drop bone fist gauntlets and a 50% chance to drop trouncing boots. Both really good items. It's worth noting that Commander Felstrom is probably going to be available to kill less often, primarily because he's easier to get to and he's just an easier kill in general. You could probably solo this guy, so just be aware that he might not be around as often as Lord Malathrom. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, yeah, I could go kill Lord Malathrom, but he's on the other side of the cemetery. Well, not necessarily. You see, if you kill Commander Felstrom and then head down into the bottom of the western portion of the catacombs, you'll stumble upon what I stumbled upon, which is a cool little easter egg and a way to get from one catacomb to the other without having to go overground. Now, there is a huge benefit to doing this, primarily because Mauler Dim, the 35 elite that roams around Ravenhill Cemetery, will pretty much one or two shot anybody that goes near him, and he has an absolutely bananas aggro range. There is a very, very good reason why you want to head down here through this hidden tunnel. I had no idea this existed, and I was absolutely gobsmacked to actually find it. I guess a lot, a lot of people know that this is a thing, and yeah, I was just so surprised. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. A fun little easter egg, and something that probably less than, I would say, at least 5% of people even know about. So now, if you do want an easy way to check if one or the other is there, or you've killed one and want to quickly kill the other, you can do it using the secret tunnel. How cool is that? Fenros. Up next we have Fenros, a level 32 elite wargan that hangs around inside of Brightwood Grove. There's really not much to say about this guy, he's pretty easy to spot, he's fairly easy to kill, and he's often killed quite a lot. He does have a little flame pillar to watch out for, but it doesn't tend to do that much damage, so I think you'd be alright. His damage is so-so, so I wouldn't really worry too much about that. You may need two people to kill him, he does seem to have a little bit more health than your average 32 elite. If you kill him, a 25% chance to drop the Tribal Warg Helm, and a 60% chance to drop the Ravenwood Bow. The Ravenwood Bow is pretty cool, but I think the Warg Helm is the one that everybody wants, and it has the lower drop chance of the two. Very cool nonetheless, and unique loot, two thumbs up from me. Nefaru. And last but not least, we have Nefaru, a eye-watering 37 elite wargan that hangs around at the back of the Rotting Orchard. 
I'm just showing you quickly here how to get here from the entrance of the Rotting Orchard. You just follow the tree line around on the right. There is also a camp here with a chest if you fancy picking that up. But if you keep following it around on the right of the orchard and head into the woods and go straight, you will eventually come across two more barren trees. Once you get to those trees, you need to take a left and there is a small windy little path that leads you straight up to Nefaru's cave. The fight with Nefaru itself is really, really difficult and I'm not overstating that at all. Not only is he a 37 elite, but he also has three adds with him. What I would probably recommend doing is what I've done here, which is CCing him as much as possible and then trying to kill the adds. There is no way you're going to be able to do this solo, uh, but what I would say is this fight is incredibly fun to do because Nefaru has so much health. I would definitely recommend having you and four buddies group up and go in there, even if you're underleveled, and just have a crack at trying to kill him, just because the fight itself is so wacky. As you'll see here, I was hitting for 200 to 400 a pop, and I was not even taking 10% of his health off a go. If you can kill him though, congratulations, it's definitely worth celebrating. He is probably the most difficult rare I've come across to date while I've been doing this series. And yeah, um, as for loot though, eh, it's a bit of a mixed bag. A 80% chance to drop the Nefarious Buckler, which is a good shield, and a 20% chance to drop the Beast Walker Robe. A lot of people say that the Beast Walker Robe is absolute garbage, I would somewhat disagree with that, I think Stamina and Spirit definitely has its place, especially with things like Priest and Mage. The Agility, I'm not really sure why that's on there, but nevertheless, it's not actually a bad robe at all for level 29. What I would say though is kudos to Blizzard for actually taking the time with Dustwood to add unique items in for every rare. That is really commendable, even if the items are not always best in slot. you want to pause the video now if you want a map of all of the rares in Dustwood, I'm just showing it on the screen now. I've also included a link in the description below. So that sums up all six rares, their drops and locations in Dustwood. Overall, I think Dustwood is probably one of the best zones I've done so far. The items are really varied, they are really unique and kind of personal to each mob as well. And the zone itself is just really, really fun to go hunting mobs in. I love the fact they're all elites, it's a real challenge for players. I absolutely was blown away by that little easter egg I found. And Nafaru is actually a really cool fight to do. So I think there's a really good mix of challenge, scarcity and uniqueness about the rares in Dustwood to actually make it definitely in one of my top three zones for rares so far. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more like this in the future, subscribe to the channel.